your people, your body. We just thank you. Thank you so much, Lord, that you have brought us into your kingdom. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, we just we just got through singing that uh, you guys can sit, please. Um, just got through saying that one generation will commend your kingdom to another. And unfortunately, that's in our hearts. But unfortunately, the church through the ages has not done that. And that's a big reason why our country and the world is in the situation that it's in today. And that's where we need to change. Because now God has given us the opportunity to make a difference. God has given us the opportunity and he's opening doors and granted we have not seen them open as much as we would like to see so far, but they're coming. <laughs> the, uh, as sure as I'm standing here, I know the doors are gonna be open and we are gonna be a busy church, okay? So um, Pastor Diane asked me to revisit this little script that uh, John is passing out uh, again, we've been through it. I'm not going to go through it in a, in a lot of detail like we did last time, but just wanted to hit on a, a, just uh, some key points, um, just as an exhortation, I guess, or just to a refresher, if you will, about um, the value of what you have in your hand right now, okay? Because it's a tool, and that's what we, the way we need to look at this is that it's a, simply a tool for you to do the job that God has called you to do, and that's for all of us, okay? It's something that we can use to help prepare ourselves even as we look to use it to reach out to people. So it's something that is designed um, and the more you look at it and the more you study the way it's put together, the more you see of all the thought that did go into it and all the bases that are covered in this little piece of paper that, that you have, okay? So it's something that is going to enable us or help to equip us to save a soul, to help keep someone from going to hell. And that is what our job is to do in this season, okay? The other thing that this little piece of paper does is helps to change our heart. Okay, it's something that as we uh, receive it uh, as a uh, task, if you will, to do something to do for the Lord, as we look at it that way and as we step into it, then we will we find, because I can testify, and I am testifying to that, that it changes our own heart. Okay, it helps our, get our heart in alignment with the Lord's heart. Because if the church had done everything that it needed to do through the ages, we would be in a lot better shape than we are today. You would, would you agree with that? And so we need to do that for ourselves and for our children and for the unsaved. Okay? And we need to get our heart in the right place that it is in alignment with, with where Jesus' heart is. Okay? And when you do this, and when you look at it in that perspective and say, this is for me to do today, then you begin to realize, as I did, of where I was falling short, okay? You begin to realize that you miss opportunities or you're not looking for opportunities or you're not thinking about opportunities or you're just not in sync with the Lord. You know, you're, you're busy with everyday activities. You're busy with your life. Uh, the things that need to get done, okay? Everybody's busy to a certain extent in many different ways. And all of those things of life oftentimes overwhelm the thought process that's behind this little piece of paper, okay? And I think probably everybody would agree with that, okay? Um, so we need to change that. And that's, that's all I'm here to, to say today is that this can help you change that for yourself, okay? If you receive it, if you are willing to Put your time and your thought and your heart, especially, into that process, okay? Um, so, just generally, I'm just going to hit on a, just a couple of points because I only wanted to take a few minutes this morning. But 
To begin with, this obviously is designed to primarily to be used with someone that you don't know, as if you were meeting on the street, which is the way it was intended or put together to begin with. Um, but a key thing with this is that just as it begins, hi, my name is, what's your name? Okay, it's an icebreaker. That's all that is. It's just a way to kind of make a, a contact with a stranger that breaks down some walls and says, my name is Bob, what's your name? Okay, and so there's something more there than just, you know, some crazy person on the street that is, uh, you know, looking for money or something, okay? Um, so, the point here is that look at it as um, that icebreaker thing. If you're talking to a family member or if you're talking to a friend, you, gotta, you got that already covered, okay? So this is, again, the concept of just trying to use this thought process with family or with friends is simply, uh, you got, already got one leg up into the process because you know them, you're friends with them, or you work with them, you're having a coffee with them, and so that part is already covered, okay? Now, one key thing that I wanted to point out with this is that the next part says, I've just got to tell you two things real quick, okay? So a key thing about that is that there's an urgency. There's an urgency that's kind of laid out right at the beginning. So you're kind of capturing their attention. You know, you've made some, you know, you've, you've broken the ice, you've captured their attention, and you're communicating that you've got something important to say, okay? It's not something that we're not just casually talking about sports or anything else, okay? It's, it's, it's urgent, okay? It's, it's, it's a, uh, um, something that you need to know, okay? And so, and then it goes on, and you, you, you know, you tell them that God loves them. And then the, um, the question, the big question, okay? If you were to die today, do you know for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, that you would go straight to heaven? Okay, so what's behind this? This is the reality. This is the reality that we understand as Christians, as believers, but a lot of people don't understand because they don't want to hear it or because they've never been led that way, they've never been informed, they've never been educated. The generation before them didn't tell them what they needed to know, and so now they're in a situation where they're without knowledge, okay? And so that's, that's the point. The point is, this is important, we got, this is an urgent matter, and I'm saying to you by, by reading the script to you or by going through this process with you that um, I'm kind of challenging you, okay, to look at something that you kind of know in the back of your mind, but you haven't really thought about it or you haven't really given it time to think about it. And so I'm kind of in your face now or we're sitting down having a cup of coffee and listen, I just want, I, you need to know this. Okay, because this is reality. Okay, so it's not a matter of, I'm going to read the Bible to you. Okay, it's not a matter of, um, this is just something to talk about. Okay, this is something that you need to know. So let me tell you three things. And then the script goes, the script goes on to get right into the Word. Because that's where the power is. Okay, that's where the information is. That's where the details are. And there's only three points. Okay, number one, everybody's a sinner. And number two, all sinners are going to go to, to hell, although it doesn't put it that way. It's, uh, the wages of sin is death. Okay, and in today's world, who's not, <laughs> who's not talking about death? <laughs> who, with the pandemic, I mean, who, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a subject that surrounds us constantly. Okay, and so there again is an open door to you know, segue a conversation into this kind of a thought process, okay? So it doesn't have to be, you know, step by step, but if that, if that comes up, it's a perfect opportunity to talk about the real death, not just when your body dies, okay? What's gonna happen after that, okay? And, um, and the third is, okay, uh, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So the three simple scriptures 
all of which will plant seed. Okay, there's a minimum of three seeds specifically, but if you look at this in more detail, you see there's, there's many more seeds that are planted in the process. Okay, so you, that's what you're doing. So even if, and my experience has been that the majority of people will pray. The majority of people are willing to pray or to have you pray for them. Okay, so at a minimum, you're planting a lot of seeds, even if they choose not to pray. Okay, at a minimum, you're giving the Holy Spirit the opportunity to work more in their heart. So when they walk away from that cup of coffee, then the Holy Spirit has more to work with. Okay, you've opened up a door, you've challenged them, you know, you've opened their eyes to um, a spiritual aspect of life that a lot of people don't think about and need to think about today. Okay, um, and the prayer, the prayer time is a freebie. And most people are willing to take that freebie. Most people, I've had very little, very few people that said, no, I don't want you to pray for me. Very, very few. Um, so you can pray specifically for their particular needs and you can pray and lead them. That's the whole back of the page. You can pray to lead them into that prayer of salvation. Okay, so there's all kinds of things. Once you've, got, once you've broken that ground and once you've had that, open that door, and once you've um, expressed the urgency of what, um, what you have to say, hit on the specific points, and then you got, the, anything can happen in the prayer time, okay? You can find out who they are, what their needs are, who's sick in their family, and all of those kinds of things. And then ultimately, even lead them in the salvation prayer. So I think that really is the, the key things I wanted to cover. <clears throat> With one additional thought, um, because I was just watching a newscast just a couple of days ago, and it just struck me, because the, our, our theme has been on hope lately, <laughs> and it just struck me how this, you know, how the church really needs to have this mindset, because it was the, the, the anchor of the program was kind of like interviewing a, uh, a field reporter who was specializing in the financial uh, area. And so she says um, something to the effect of, uh, they, were, they were talking about a couple of companies that were doing something to, uh, you know, they were planning for growth and expansion. And I remember um, one was Air, Airbnb and that they, had, uh, pl they were planning on going public, okay? And so she said to the, the field reporter, she says, uh, doesn't that kind of strike you as kind of odd that you know, with people, you know, waiting in food lines and people unemployed and everything that they're, that they're thinking about, you know, kind of doing that? And, um, you know, the reporter says, yeah, well, but that's, that's the thing, that they're looking ahead. They're, per they're preparing and they're looking ahead because they're, they're expecting things are going to change. Okay, they're hoping things are going to change. And so they're preparing now in anticipation of things getting better and people traveling more, okay? And it just struck me like, wow, that's what we need to be doing. <laughs> that's what the church needs to be doing. And this is just one little thing that can help, okay? That can help prepare you to do what is coming, okay? We all are hoping and praying I think for an awakening, right? We're all hoping and praying to see family members get close to the Lord. People who are, are stuck in religion get set free from that, right? We're looking for those things. We're expecting those things. And we're believing that we're going to be a part of making that happen, right? The important thing for us today is to get ready. We need to be ready. And I, and I know I need a lot, more a lot more preparation because when God opens the door, there's going to be a lot of things to do. And we need to be ready. We need to have our hearts in the right place if we're going to do things the way Jesus would do them. Okay? And I know I'm not there yet. So, anyway. Amen?